Um, hello, welcome to um, September Spotlight On. Um, this month we're focused on building inner confidence for our leadership theme and we're in conversation with Lorna Woodman, uh, co-founder of the UK retailer Marks and Spencer's uh, Buddy Network. Um, Lorna has done a lot of work both personally and inside the network to drive inner confidence. Hey everybody, it's Brendan here as well and it's Great to have Lorna with us and you know we are a fan of the work that Lorna and Susie King do with the MNS Buddy Network and Lorna is also a key member of our Purple Confidence think tank which is mobilizing disability and ERG network leaders to really shape the principles and the tools needed to support employees with disabilities to build their inner confidence. So looking forward to diving into this conversation with you both Laura and Lauren. Thank you. Yeah. Hi everyone. Thank you. Um, so Lorna, you, you found you co-founded the Buddy Network in 2015. Could you tell us a bit about yourself and why? Um, yeah, so I co-founded the network, as you say, um, coming up to six years ago now. Um, I entered um, MS with a disability. So I have a condition um, called ME, which I've had for coming up to about 18 years now. Um, I'd had a great recruitment process, I'd had a great university experience, um, but kind of looking back I think perhaps was a little bit naive coming into the world of work and if I'm honest I found it a bit tougher than I expected. Um, so kind of several years in, several managers later, um, I'd kind of reached this point where I literally just felt so alone. Um, and I actually thought I was the only person in MS who had a disability, which I now find quite laughable because I now know that that is definitely not the case. Um, so I kind of got to a point where it was suggested to me by my manager at the time that maybe I reached out to HR and see, you know, was there somebody I could talk to who also had a disability? And I was um, put in touch with um, my colleague called Susie. Um, so we started having coffees and chats on a regular basis. And then it was about six months after that, because we'd found that relationship so beneficial um, that we decided that we would try and expand that idea for other people. And that's kind of how the Buddy Network came along. We called each other our buddies. Um, and so we basically decided to create a online community. So it was originally on Yammer, but we've um, recently migrated over to Microsoft Teams. So we have a closed safe space community where um, our colleagues can share their stories, can say about having a bad day, ask for support, um, buddy up and just kind of offer peer support to one another. So that is kind of what we do with Buddy. And then also we, of course, work with um, the MS business, the inclusion team, our senior sponsors um, to look for opportunities for like improving things um, for our customers and our colleagues. Um, but yeah, I suppose my main driving force for being involved in this and why I'm still doing it six years later, I think it is that whole thing of not wanting anyone else to feel alone the way that I did. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I got involved and why I'm still doing this. Thank you. Um, I love the name as well in terms of really showing that sense of community and solidarity and um, showing that you don't want others to feel what you went through with being alone. So thank you. It's, it's really interesting, Lorna, that you mentioned feeling alone and loneliness of others a couple of times in your description of your early experiences and then the origins of the the buddy network and you know this month we're focused on the role of networks in building the inner confidence of of colleagues with disabilities and we know from the experience of our community that sometimes it is that loneliness and this sense of having to manage these things by ourselves um, that can have a detrimental effect on our on our own sense of confidence um, so look, just a question really about, you know, you talked about your kind of journey in terms of your career and I uh, just wondered what you learned when it comes to managing disability and, and your career. What have you learned from a personal perspective, um, but also any insights as the chair of the, the Buddy Network about building the inner confidence? Um, well, so I, I think I think I've learned a lot as as I've kind of gone along. I think it takes time to build confidence. I don't think it's, you know, when I got diagnosed with ME, nobody handed me a little manual saying, this is how you do it. This is how you, you know, become confident in dealing with it. So it's taken time and it's been a constant learning process. 
Um, and I think I think for me, this kind of concept of inner confidence, there's so many like different factors and layers to what can actually influence that and different scenarios you find yourself in. So if I look back to when I was 15, newly diagnosed, that was very different experience to where I am now in my early 30s. And there's also like different kind of like life experiences. And, you know, at 15, I had different responsibilities and priorities to what I do now. And there's then like the different settings you find yourself in, whether it's like dealing with, um, you know, your doctor um, going through education or indeed, you know, work. There's so many different scenarios you find yourself in there and different situations you'll have a different level of confidence. Um, so it's it's been an interesting journey. I think perhaps one of the most important things I've learned and I need to actually get better at um, doing this myself is not actually being so hard on myself when I don't have the confidence. I think it's actually OK to like acknowledge that sometimes we're not going to know all the answers. We're not going to know the best way to, way to deal with things. Um, the, you know, there will be situations where your confidence won't be there, whether that's because you're newly diagnosed or you're just in a different different scenario. Um, but that's kind of, I suppose, where the importance of like peer support and finding people that you can learn from is is really helpful. Really interesting in terms of what you're saying on about it being an, an iterative process, one that we that we build over time and um, yeah, also that, this idea that sometimes recognizing, you know, a lack of confidence in a, in a situation almost it is an act of confidence in in and of itself. Just one building on 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 that and your own personal learnings as you've then stepped into this leadership role with the with the buddy network. I just wondered if you had any learnings or ref, or reflections on the role of networks in supporting a wider cohort of, of people to develop their own confidence. Um. I suppose I think just having the network just helps because if you're unsure with how to deal with a certain situation, you've instantly got this kind of, you know, we've got, I think we've got about 325 people in the network now. So you've got that whole, you know, community of people that you can go out and ask and there'll be someone who's had a similar experience. They might not have the same condition as you, but that can really sort of help with giving you ideas of how to approach things, but also how to kind of improve your own confidence. Um, so I think I think it's it's kind of always back to having that kind of community that is almost like invaluable. And often people will know that there's a resource or there's something available to help you, even if you didn't know it yourself. So it's just, yeah, throwing things out to a wide audience can often help you find and develop your confidence in dealing with um, situations. Yeah, so breaking down the isolation and providing people with a, a way of connecting and learning from each other, really powerful. And then look, one more supplementary question, I'm being greedy. I wondered if you <laughs> learned anything or any reflections um, in terms of, you know, has your journey and your experience taught you anything about um, non-disabled people? Yeah, I think, I think on reflection, it's like, actually helped me emphasize a bit more with people who haven't had that experience of disability themselves because it's you know it's difficult if you haven't actually experienced it trying to understand what somebody's going through it's it's very hard to kind of put yourself in that person's shoes and understand you know um what they're going through um, and I think you as a kind of person with a disability and I'm not saying that this is the way it should be but sometimes you do find yourself having to help others learn about what works for you and how best to support you and that can be really helpful although I kind of feel that sometimes that's almost a vicious circle in a way because you if you don't have your own inner disability confidence and you don't feel very confident talking about your condition it's very hard for you then to have those kind of conversations to help others um, support you in the best way but then for them to support you they need to have a certain level of confidence so it's is a tricky one but um yeah, I think it's definitely helped me kind of like emphasize and try to kind of understand that, you know, people, everyone comes from a good place at the end of the day. And it's hard if you haven't been in that situation to like fully understand what someone's going through. Yeah, nice. Thank you. Thank you, Lorna. Um, I think also with your your answer about um, the support of the Buddy Network, it, it reminds me of um, what you mentioned last time as well about how, you know, with and as sort of as, as you've touched on at different stages of your life, you need to then um, rebuild that competence if you're going into a new environment that you're not used to. So it's it's even more important that there is um, a network or a system to support people through that journey as well. Um, so um, you have um, personally designed your own pack for communicating information about your disability at work. Um, 
Can you tell us a bit more about why you did that, um, what it includes and how you've developed it more widely for other colleagues to use as well? Yeah, sure. Um, so kind of going, I suppose, back to the point where we kind of almost set up the network. Um, again, I just had like loads of different line managers, was really struggling to um, communicate to them about my disability, what support I needed. Um, and I think I kind of had this realisation that, you know, people communicate better in different ways. And for me, having something written was going to be much more helpful. Um, with my ME, sometimes I struggle a bit cognitively and like remembering things. And I would go away from managers being like, oh, I should have told them this, but because I was so uncomfortable talking about my disability, um, I would forget to mention it. So I kind of had in my head this idea that I wanted something written down and I knew exactly what I wanted. Um, so I went out to Google because I was sure somebody else had um, already done it. And um, yeah, I couldn't find what I was looking for, unfortunately. So um, I ended up writing what has become known as my pack. It doesn't have a very exciting name, um, but essentially what it is, is just a PowerPoint and it's got different sections. So it talks about it talks about my conditions um, and that allowed me um, to actually source information that I knew was accurate and that I could trust from like um, any charities, for example. So um, that was really important to um, have in there. It talks about obviously my symptoms, some things that would like affect me at work. It um, it talks about my journey. So my journey to me is something I'm quite proud of. It's something quite personal, but it also shows where I've been, where I've come from and how I've got to the point that I am at the moment. So for me, it was quite important that that was included. Um, and then it also talks about my coping techniques um, at work. And I'd say this isn't necessarily just like reasonable adjustments. It's kind of like practical things or just things that are useful for somebody to know. Um, I suppose a kind of like good example is in there. I talk about stairs versus lifts um, and I have actually had people who have read my pack and have actually like acted on this. Um, so like I'm thinking like pre-COVID times, but like often I'll be chatting to someone and we'll walk past the list, we'll get to the staircase and people have read my packs have now been a bit like, oh, Lorna, yes, remember reading your pack. You're not meant to use the stairs. We're going to use the lift because what I tend to do is I think it's that kind of thing if you want to be included and, you know, you're talking to someone you don't want to get left behind. So I've been quite bad in the past and used the stairs and I absolutely shouldn't have and meant to save my energy. So it's been really useful. That's like an example where it's just been useful where somebody's read it and they've been able to kind of like be like, ah, no, Lorna, not meant to do that. Um, so it talks about my coping techniques. It also has like links to um, like further information and it's also got kind of, I suppose, scattered around it, just some statements about how I want to be treated. And that was really important to me was to have my kind of voice about how I want to be um, treated as somebody with a disability. And so it has things like, it, it has stuff like saying, yes, this all sounds very like, you know, um, dark and depressing, what's, you know, what you're having to, what I'm having to live with, but you know, um, I don't want any sympathy. I'm used to dealing with this. Um, I think there's a statement in there because I found like with managers, I've had to work out how to get the balance. So I've had some experiences where I've been, what I call treated like a bit of a China doll, um, you know, and it's been, you know, people just trying to be really, really helpful, but taking it a bit too far, um, especially as I'm someone who likes to be quite independent. But then you have the opposite end of the spectrum where when you need support, someone's not kind of acted. So I've got a little statement about there about like just how I kind of want to be want to work with people and try and find that balance ultimately. Thank you. That's really helpful. Um, your pack sounds amazing and so developed and it's great that you um, from your own initiative has have created something that really supports you at work to feel more confident in the workplace and, and build that um, inner confidence. Um, I know that you've um, sort of adapted it for colleagues as well. Could you just um, um, tell us a bit more about that as well? Yeah, of course. Um, so we shared it with um, our wellbeing manager at the time when we were setting up the network and um, they sort of created a template that could be used um, for other colleagues at MS. So we have had some of the colleagues who have used it to kind of document their journey and their story. I mean, it doesn't work for everyone and, you know, it's I suppose it's something we could um, promote wider, wider kind of talked about how you could almost get like a library of different conditions but um yeah the feedback has been good and um I've had quite a few people where mine has been hosted on like the company SharePoint where they've kind of reached out because they've got my condition or something similar um and that's kind of prompted them to get in touch and you know make that kind of connection. That's great thank you and um both either like for yourself or with colleagues in general what what has been the impact of this pack? Um I 
I think from a kind of personal level for me, it's just been great because it's really helped with my confidence um, with working with managers, working with other colleagues. Um, and obviously it was created based on my kind of experiences of what I felt would be helpful. Um, and yeah, I think we've had some other colleagues who've fed back and they've shared it with um, colleagues or when they've ha been having like difficulties, like having those initial conversations with their line managers and it's kind of helped bridge the gap with that. Thank you. Yeah, um, I think it's it's just wonderful to hear about the work that you've done on this. And we know that building in a com confidence is something that is really important to a lot of our members, but is not something that's easy to do. Um, and this sounds like a, a nice step in, in the right direction for helping yourself. And even though it was not intentional, but also helping others at the same time, which is always great too. It's a great example as as well of the kind of things that we're exploring as part of the Purple Confidence Think Tank. And I mentioned that Lorna is a, a key member of that group. And you know, we're essentially looking at how do we put that kind of empowering content and those types of resources into the hands of every employee with a disability in, in the world. So um, Lorna, I, I know that you're excited about the work that the Think Tank is doing. So I just wondered, yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts and reflections on on why, you th why you're so excited about that. Yeah, um, yeah, so as you say, I'm very excited to be involved. Um, I think for me, this whole piece around um, building in a disability confidence, I just feel that it's been quite largely missing um, previously and perhaps a bit unacknowledged. So I think it's just great that, you know, Purple Space is shining a light on that and looking to, you know, create resources to help colleagues. We've obviously got um, out there is the um, Government Disability Confidence Scheme, which is great. And, you know, MNS we've recently done on level two. But um, I think this kind of your actual uh, person's actual inner disability confidence, there's still so much more that can be done around that. Um, and I think it's actually got the potential to be really beneficial. Um, and through the think tank, I know that they're also looking for uh, looking to develop these helpful to know guides, which I hope I've got the name right. Um, which, <laughs> which um, again, I think are just going to be a really useful resource because, and I think it's specifically because the content from that is actually coming from the people who are experienced and living and working with disabilities. And I think that's so important. I think I, I know within the wider disability community and the phrase, you know, nothing about us without us has been sort of, you know, said quite a lot recently, but I think that is really key. And yeah, really excited to kind of see what comes out of the think tank um, and the resources. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're really excited about putting those helpful to know guides out. So got the title right. Um, so yeah, <laughs> resources that source tips and tricks from people with a range of different disabilities and long-term conditions about the types of information that they have shared with managers, with colleagues, and exactly the way that you have, Lorna, with, with your pack, so that colleagues who are perhaps thinking about sharing information for the first time, or perhaps they acquired a condition relatively recently, um, can almost you know learn directly from the experiences of those that have come before them so really excited about that and it does it does do i think what you were alluding to in your, in your answer as well lorna is there's all addresses a bit of an imbalance which is it's really easy now for you know hr practitioners or dni leads or even line managers to access guidance to help them to understand disability as a business issue and um, help them to build their skills and confidence um, but less for colleagues with yes. disabilities yeah absolutely and I think and I think there needs to be that balance I think that's that's a piece of the puzzle that's been missing you know absolutely we need to help line managers but colleagues as well because if a colleague's not going to feel um you know confident talking about their disability then it's going to be really hard to kind of get that ultimate um you know beneficial working relationship where support can be put in place and we can make sure that you know everyone's achieving their best Thank you. Um, I'm also really looking forward to the work that the Purple Confidence Think Tank is doing and um, yeah, just looking forward to Purple Space supporting um, a future in which more employees with disabilities do feel confident in the workplace. So um, thank you.
as as we look forward to um, Purple Light Up, which is only a few months away, um, I just wanted to ask about that. Um, we know that Marks and Spencers um, celebrates the economic contribution of employees with disabilities by getting involved in this movement. Um, so what has been the impact of Purple Light Up on Marks and Spencers in previous years? And what are you, um, what are you looking forward to and building on for this year? Um, yes, so we, we love getting behind the whole purple light up and being on the 3rd of December. So I think for us, it's um, it's been that opportunity to you know, obviously, obviously raise the profile of the network and also the inclusion agenda at m and um, you know, a chance to share stories from the community. But I think actually just, you know, taking it down to like really cool, simple things, just actually having conversations about disability, actually saying the word, because I think there's still this kind of stigma and people feel, you know, scared to actually talk about it. So just actually being able to like have those conversations and um, yeah, shine a light on um, the whole concept of disability awareness has been really, really impactful and really important. And um, we're obviously looking forward to continue to build on that this year. I think uh, for us as a retailer, um, we have such a wide estate, you know, across um, stores and also we've got our support offices, our distribution centres. So for us, it's always tricky trying to get everything out to everybody. So every year that's almost kind of the challenge is, OK, how can we make sure the message goes wider this year? Um, but I think what we love about it is it's such an uh, easy concept to kind of for people to get involved and get behind, you know, finding something purple to wear, for example. Um, we made a couple of years ago, back when we were in the office, we made a thousand purple ribbons that we handed out to people to wear. And so it's just really easy and people find it really easy to kind of get behind and get involved. So um, yeah, we are, we're, we're still planning, but we are looking forward um, to it this year. Thank you. Yeah, um, from our, our community of members, we see that it is just a wonderful opportunity to and drive conversations about disability um, inclusion in the workplace and our members use it in in such a wide variety of, of ways whether it is wearing purple whether it is having events or engaging in those important conversations or launching new policy so definitely super excited to see what Marks and Spencers does this year to continue building on, on what you've done in the past. And on the theme of conversation, so this month in September, we launch officially the theme for uh, this year's Purple Light Up, which is what we're calling our leader to leader conversation, where we're encouraging organisations around the world to film short video conversations between their network, disability network leaders and their CEO. We're calling it leader to leader conversation. So we're very much looking forward to seeing you, Lorna and Susie involved in that conversation. Very exciting. We should, we will be looking forward to um, yeah, getting that in action. Thank you. Great. Well, look, that brings us to the end of our conversation. Lorna, we always enjoy talking to you. Um, and yeah, I think Laura and I always come away feeling like we could talk for another couple of hours or so. But <laughs> on this occasion, we've run out of time. So I think huge thank you um, to Lauren and I for joining us today. And, you know, as I said at the start of the conversation, you know, we do so enjoy the work that you are doing with Susie and the Buddy Network, but also the contribution that you make to Purple Spaces strategic work as well. Thank you for, um, thank you for inviting me to come and talk to you. It's been great. Thank you so much. Um, and to our viewers, we'll see you um, for October's Spotlight On. Take care. Thank you.